Beretta PX4 Storm Compact Carry 9mm in a better light tuck holster. Empty chamber, no magazine. We're going to take this gun apart today, make a couple changes to it. We're going to get rid of this plastic over mold trigger and we're going to put in the metal trigger. We're also going to get rid of the totally flat stealth levers and put the latest and greatest uh, Beretta lever on it. All right, so let's take this thing apart. Get rid of the slide. Now some of you have, may have noticed that it's got a right hand uh, slide release lever. That's not standard compact carry. I just put that on there to show how to get that off. To get the left side off, just lift it up, pull it out very carefully, and mind the spring. To get the right side off, cock it to get the uh, drawbar a little farther up out of the way, push it down, pull it out. You can see the little keyhole and the little nub that holds it in. This camera doesn't have autofocus, so I don't know if you can see that. Okay, in order to uh, change the trigger, you have to disconnect the drawbar, and to do that, you have to remove the fire control group. So we'll decock the thing here. Uh, we'll pull the back strap retainer clip out. Get rid of the back strap. They can be a pain to get off, but they come off not too bad. Okay, so now uh, the little lanyard loop and uh, spring retainer plunger is held in by this pin, and that will go rocketing across the room, never to be seen again if you're not careful. So I'll hold my thumb over it, press that pin out with a punch, and there's the pin. And uh, at this point, I'll carefully pull the punch and release the plug. Okay. So there's a couple of pins that hold the fire control group in. A lot of people will drive this pin out, uh, but it's held in by the tail of the sear spring. And when you drive a, um, a grooved pin away from a spring, sometimes it can damage the spring. So as long as you know how to get at that spring and release it, that's probably a better way to do it. So I'm going to go down inside here and actually release the sear spring. I'm going to lift it up and push it off to the side and now that pin will come right out. And that pin is out. Okay, that spring will just kind of take care of itself. It's already back in place. Alright, now this, this pin, it looks like a large pin, but that's just like a big nail head on it. Uh, it's really a small pin and it's also held in by a spring over here. So what we're going to do is um, take a couple of screwdrivers. Sometimes a uh, third hand comes in handy here, so we'll just hold that there. I'm going to push that spring down and push the pin out. I think. I got the screwdrivers mixed up. This one works better to push the spring down and push that pin out. And there's the pin. Right there was the groove that it was held in by. Now the fire control group will come out. We'll get rid of the hammer. And there's the fire control group. Okay, at this point the draw bar lifts up it still won't quite come out. You gotta pull the trigger to get up to this area that's got a cutout in it and then that draw bar comes right out of there. Okay, now to get the trigger out, the trigger spring is uh, holding that pin. There's a recess in that pin that that spring is uh, down in to keep the pin from going either side. Again, some people will drive that out um, but if you just release the pressure on it a little bit here, it 
kind of pull it forward. It gets it out of the groove in the pin. Get a different punch here. And that pin comes right out. Okay, there's the pin. You can see the groove that the spring was setting in. Okay, again, that spring might launch if you're not careful. And there's the trigger spring. Alright, so at this point the trigger will just come right out of there. And there's the overmold the trigger. Here you can see the groove in the back where the tail of that spring catches that trigger to push it forward. Okay, that's really all we'd have to do for this job, but as long as we're at it, I'm going to take this thing the rest of the way apart. Right there you can see the uh, draw bar spring here. That just comes right out of there. You grab that, it goes way down in a little pocket, and that comes out. Alright, um, to get the um, slide release out, which is reversible, this little tool works pretty good here. That'll actually fit right in that hole you push that pin out and then at that point you can push the button and its spring and the metal piece just comes right out of the other side alright this thing is almost apart there's one more item here and that's the uh, little takedown lever and again I wouldn't have to take that out but I'm gonna do it just to show how it comes out. That can be a little bit tricky. There's a little spring down in here and um, there's barely enough room to get in there to push that spring down and then at that point now it takes the right tool. I made a little tool here. I flattened out a paper clip And there it comes out of there. You got to kind of wiggle and finesse and uh, work that spring. I should grab it with a pliers. It might come out of there easier, but you shouldn't really need a pliers. There's the lever. There's the spring. A spring was sitting in that little notch. And uh, that's what you got to get to come loose, and then you got to clear everything else as it's coming out of there. All right, that frame is down as far as it goes. Okay, so then let's talk about the slide a little bit to change those stealth levers. Here we can get rid of the uh, mainspring and the uh, locking block. At that point, barrel comes out. Now, in order to get the levers off, there's a tiny little roll pin right here. You can drive it out either direction. A lot of people like to drive it out from the bottom. I like to drive it out from the top. I'm going to take a uh, little block here and uh, what you have to do is once you have the right size punch, you've got to rotate the uh, lever a little bit to get on the roll pin. You got to kind of hold the lever and uh, tap out the pin. You'll know when it goes. It 
should be just about there. There. There's the pin. Here's the lever, and there is a spring in there. You want to mind that spring, and we'll talk about how that spring goes in when it goes back together. All right, and there's the uh, right side stealth lever and its spring. Okay, so uh, some people will tell you to pull the extractor, but you don't need to do that just for this lever. If you want to get the firing pin all the way out, then you have to pull the extractor. Okay, so to get uh, to get um, this piece out, uh, it's really not that hard. Uh, you got the uh, the firing pin intermediate shaft here, and if you push in on the firing pin block and just put a little pressure on that intermediate shaft, you can work. got the wrong punch here again. There. Well, it's giving me troubles here. Normally it comes right out. There, got it loose enough to rotate it and get that pin out. That's the intermediate firing pin. And there is the uh, shaft. The pin was through with the large part toward the main firing pin. Now at that point that main firing pin uh, won't come out of there because the roll pin for the uh, extractor is holding it in. So let's get that out of there. This pin's at a bit of an angle so it feels weird as you're driving it out. Um, but that, that angle's in there. All right, and that extractor does have a spring. Here is the roll pin we just took out. And now at this point, the extractor comes out. And there's the spring. This one has a double spring, a spring inside a spring. Some people say that they only have the single spring. I don't know if Beretta made changes along the way or not. This one has a double spring. At that point, um, if you push the firing pin release block, the firing pin comes out. And once it's out, the firing pin block and its spring come out. Okay, and there's the firing pin. Plenty dirty. I guess it was time to open this thing up and clean it anyway. You don't want to oil these things, but uh, they do eventually get oil in them from other general cleaning and they get some carbon build up and uh, they, they can start to stick. So it's a good idea to take them apart every now and then. Uh, we got one more spring. I can see it through here. Firing pin spring. All right, this thing is all the way down except uh, for the sights. And I'm not gonna take them out. I'm gonna put all these parts in a box and then we're going to look at the fire control group here 
The fire control group comes apart pretty easily. This is that little spring that was holding that nail head um, pin in place and uh, that comes out of there pretty easily actually. Pop this thing pop it up and slide it over and it comes right off of that post and uh, once it's off that post the uh, hammer shaft will come out and at that point um, you got the hammer out. Now there's a tiny little roll pin in there that holds the uh, this spring comes off. Um, you can just give it a twist and a pull. And this is actually a two piece item here. I'm not going to take that apart. I don't really need to take that apart to get it good and clean here. So uh, that's a tiny little roll pin and I got thumbs for fingers. So we'll just leave that in there. All right, and then at this point, um, the sear spring kind of is going to let itself loose when all this hammer stuff comes out. The pin for that probably will fall right out. All right, so there's the sear pin, the sear spring, and the sear. More parts for the box. Okay, the fire control group is almost down here. This is the um, firing pin safety block lever, and this is the decock lever. This decock lever, when you uh, uh, rotate the um, decock lever on the slide, it pushes this down, which pushes the sear forward, uh, which lets the hammer drop and at the same time the firing pin uh, intermediate shaft is rotated out of the way so it doesn't fire. Um, this device here as you pull the trigger the draw bar pulls that forward and pushes the safety uh, uh, the firing pin block up and out of the way at the same time this lever here pulls on the sear to drop the hammer. So this uh, pin comes out of there pretty easily. There's just an O-ring on this end that holds it in. You can just kind of wiggle and pull that out. You can see that O-ring uh, right there that was holding that in. And at that point you got some more parts uh, for the parts box. Okay, so now uh, some of these Berettas, okay, and here's the frame. I don't, I don't think that comes apart anymore here, the frame of the fire control group. Now this is the compact carry, so you can see that this silver color frame, it's a little different material. It's got better corrosion resistance, I guess, uh, than the standard compact, which is more of a black color. Um, that can go in a parts box as well. Okay, so this little guy right here, um, as uh, you fire the gun and reset, uh, this thing when you release the trigger, this is supposed to go into this groove and then when you release the trigger, um, the draw bar pops back up and then the gun's ready to fire again. Um, and it, it's got a longer reset because uh, by the time it gets up to this point, you're away from the sear and then you have take up. If you bend this down just a little bit, as you can see this one is bent just a little bit, it doesn't quite go into that slot and at that point um, it stays up as you hold the trigger and then you're resetting off the sear hook here and you get that real short reset with no take up. So anyway, that gun is apart. I don't know if this video is going to turn out or if I'll even post it, but right now we have a Beretta in a box. Missing a part. Missing another part. Now we have a Beretta in a box. Thanks for watching. Bye.